Hey there everybody, LSV here. Um, I watched five very long videos <laughs> and I have to say I took a lot of notes. I have 10 pages worth of notes. Um, this is actually a video response to the Pagan Vlogs and one Wiccan High Priest teach Wicca correctly. Um, the first video uh, response was from the Pagan Vlogs. Uh, he started talking about the Wicca versus Wicca. Wicca with an E is female and it means wise ones. Wicca with uh, the A is actually male and that is also translated as wise ones. Um, it was a term that Gerald Gardner used to actually describe his coven members that learned from him and those he also taught. Um, I'm going to try and make this video as quick as possible because this is like my fourth attempt at making this video and I keep getting interrupted so I'm going to make this as quick as possible. Um, to be a witch you use witchcraft and divinatory arts. Um, to be a Wiccan you have to honor the Lord and the Lady because it is a foundational concept of Wicca. Not that hard to understand. Um, magic is about intention. Worship is about intention and speaking from the heart. That's where those two differ. Um, Gardner did not place gods or goddesses into the position of the Lord and Lady. It was actually a modified concept that Gardner learned when he was first initiated and started practicing. Um, you kept on calling yourself also an eclectic pagan, not Wiccan, which later in your final response videos I noticed that you actually brought up again and explained a little so I'm not gonna push the issue um, though a Wiccan is a pagan not all pagans are Wiccan um, the way each person actually interacts with the divine I'm gonna jump as quickly as possible um, is definitely different I do agree with you on that however in Wicca whether it's traditional or not ritual is actually the foundation of the practice and whether you do it on the astral um, in your home or in your mind and your heart um, the ritual is still taking place in Wicca ceremonial ritual and rites are actually stressed because not only do they actually work as a trigger uh, for the shift in the consciousness um, it puts you in that magical mindset so to speak but it also gives you a structure that works. Uh, it takes your mind off of how to do the ritual because it's the same with only minor differences. So your focus can be on the worship or the magic that you need to get done and not all the physical stuff such as lighting a candle or how am I going to cast the circle this time or anything like that. Yet all that is set in stone pretty much um, that you can tweak with little minor things to make it more personal to you. Um, one thing that I can tell you as an eclectic Wiccan High Priestess is that you do have to be patient and not jump to snap judgments. Um, no, it wasn't in your, your intention there, Pagan Vlogs, but you did do that. Um, and it, it's fine. Everybody does it. I'm guilty of it every once in a while, too. But um, I just wanted to say that I don't follow any specific tradition. Um, but I actually have learned from the Corellian nativist. I'm actually in their second degree work and because of college and because of work, it's very difficult for me to keep going. Um, but I mean, I take their stuff and I, I personalize it. I've talked to Reverend Don. I've talked to Reverend Ed Hubbard. I've talked to Reverend Tracy Logan Wood. I know Zara Khan. Um, I'm actually friends with him and I, I actually know his real name. Um, I also know, uh, Selena Fox. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her. She's an absolutely wonderful woman, but all these people practice, um, a specific traditional form of Wicca. And I can sit down and I can talk to them. And I think it may be more beneficial to you in the long run to try and be a little more patient with people that you find on YouTube. Um, I mean, this is the internet. Sometimes what we say may not always be exactly what we mean. Um, it, it can be kind of hard to get the message across sometimes because you're not in person. You don't have that one in one on one interaction. Um, you're talking to thousands of people at some at some points. 
Um, I know some of my YouTube videos, I've got close to 10,000 people who have watched the one video. So how do I make a video that's so personalized to them without offending somebody else? You know, it. some people will take it as it is, some people won't. Some people will try to look into it. Um, but anyway, back to my point. Um, part of the duties of a priest or priest is it is the actual serving of deity. Um, if you don't want to serve deity, then being a priest is not what you want to be. Or a priestess, depending on uh, your gender. Um, it's part of the priesthood duty. Although I don't go around spreading the good word of the Book of the Dead, although I do actually kind of joke about doing so, I think that would be kind of funny, honestly. I would record probably people's expressions um but that's me i'm weird like that um honoring deity and spreading the message of love and respect not love and light but love and respect is actually part of the duties involved of the priesthood um a priest or priestess title comes with knowledge with patience and with compassion even when you're frustrated i don't know how many times i've had to remind myself of this um to remind myself to be patient with people who frustrate me. To constantly reconsider different subject matters. Um, because somebody else has given me something different to look at it from a different perspective. Um, you have to be open to these kinds of things. Otherwise, you'll close your mind off and nobody will be able to really get through and share the knowledge that they have with you. Um, like I said, I do practice Wicca from an eclectic standpoint, but I do not look at it like it's a buffet to pick and choose what I want to follow. Um, just because eclectic Wicca appears to be watered down, it, it's actually due to this whole concept of the buffet style of, um, Wicca. You can't take, here's an example. Um, this is how I, I try to explain it to people sometimes. Yes, you do have to do what feels right to you. Um, you have to explore and experience the divine within your own spiritual context. However, if you are going to follow specifically eclectic Wicca, you have to follow Wicca. You have to have the basic concepts of Wicca in your practice. You have to honor and respect the duality of nature. You have to honor and respect the Lord and the Lady. You have to serve the Lord and the Lady because that is part of your 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 practice as a Wiccan. Um, you do the ceremonies in, in the basic foundation of you cleanse the sacred space. You, um, you, you cast the circle. You make sure the altar has all of its tools on it already before you cast the circle. You summon the four uh, elements or cardinal points and you call down the Lord and the Lady. Basic ritual format. And it's done the same way with maybe some minor tweaks with how you cleanse the sacred space, you know, every single time. It's functional. It works. There's a reason why it is done that way. Um, when you practice Wicca, and this is, this is my personal belief, when you practice Wicca, you practice self-empowerment. You practice self-understanding. And you honor deity and what he or she or they have to offer. I mean, you can see trees, beautiful trees behind me. There's actually a, a pond down there, too, and I've got two ducks and four blackbirds out there <laughs> at the moment. But I love this. I, I love sitting out here because I get to see what deity has to offer me, and I, I, I give thanks to them for placing it here, for making me one of the keepers, one of the protectors, and one of the watchers of this gorgeous scene. Um, now I can agree with you on some of the topics, but these were just a few things mentioned that, um, I've actually learned and that I wanted to share that I've picked up from my teachers, as well as the duties of being a high priestess. Um, moving on to the second video, which was, or was a, the video response, um, One Wiccan High Priest, your part one video of the VRREVR, -E um, you can actually be taken as a little arrogant sometimes. Um, 
you've even already said it yourself. You're you can be arrogant about the Lord and the Lady, but as priesthood, who who isn't? Um, although I think it was a little extreme for pagan vlogs to actually say you know what he did concerning the subject that you that you come across as an evangelical preacher um i i can't go that far to say that because yeah sometimes you can get a little pushy on certain subjects but that's that's your way of teaching that is your way of trying to share your information and anybody who's really trying to seek out that information will look past that to listen to what you're actually trying to tell them. Um, the way that I look at things when it comes to things, uh, to stuff like that, is that you, you do have to look beyond. You have to try and look at how the other person is speaking. Um, is there any information that you can add based on what you've learned to share your experience with them? Um, if something is obviously misspoken, you know, I go with a more gentler nudge to say, hey, this is what uh, I think you may have meant. Um, or maybe you should have tried saying it this way so that way your meaning came across a little more clear. It, it shows respect and it also shows that you're trying to make an effort to understand um, the other person's point of view. Because sometimes well, our point of views don't always come across right. Um, on the subject of priesthood, though. No matter what tradition of Wicca you practice, the goals and the duties are the same. Um, it, it, there may be some very tiny details that uh, vary, but um, when you choose to take on the education and the role of being part of the priesthood, I definitely have to agree with you, uh, one Wiccan high priest. It's, a, it's an extremely serious matter. Um, and the reason why it's a serious matter is because you are offering yourself and in, in your, your existence to deity, to serving deity, to trying to protect what deity has given us. Um, it, it's a complete change in lifestyle. It's a complete change in thinking, as as well as how you react and how you act about certain things. Um, also, as a priest or priestess, not only do uh, you serve and honor deity, but you're also a mother, you're a father, you're a brother, a sister, you're a counselor, role model, student teacher, follower, and leader. You're a wife and a husband, and you're the best friend that your coven, your coveners or your coven mates can possibly have. Um, you have to be able to talk wisely to anyone that you meet. You have to be patient with those who are frustrating, cry with those who are sad, comforting to those who have lost someone or something that's very precious to them, something that meant something very dear to them. And you also have to be extremely overjoyed for their success and for your own personal successes as it comes along. Um, and it's not easy. It takes a very special person who has a very deep calling to become a dedicated priest or priestess of the Wiccan path, no matter what the tradition or lack thereof is. Um, you know, as, as an eclectic Wiccan, I don't follow a specific tradition, but I do follow what Wicca's basic constructs are. And I am a high priestess within eclectic Wicca, despite the fact it's not actually a tradition. I'm sorry, my hair is a mess and it keeps falling out of the clip that I've got it in. <sighs> Um, and it doesn't help that it's very hot out here on the porch. Uh, <laughs> anyway, back on point. Uh, thanks to great authors such as Raymond Buckland, Scott Cunningham, and Kate West, and thanks to the internet, uh, we are actually very well connected. And I, I, I absolutely love YouTube specifically for this purpose. We can sit down and we can share these different things that we know um, with without having a bunch of people starting to try and chop each other's heads off. Um, and I'm sorry, but that's the only analogy that I could come up with on the spot here. Um, because I've seen some arguments get very, very aggressive even here on YouTube. Um but there are many people who are actually still highly uninformed, as one Wiccan high priest actually pointed out. Um, how they are uninformed? Pagan vlogs, I will explain to you exactly how these people are uninformed. With that etymology thing that we were that um, we talked about in the very beginning of this video with the Wicca versus Wicca, well, in the in your last video or two, you started talking about witch. You went from talking about Wicca to witch. How that happened, I'm not quite sure, but you also said that in the etymology of the word witch, that there was the word Wicca. Um, 
do not always believe what is on the internet. The etymology of which originally was not Wicca, Wicca was not actually part of that etymology. That is actually something more recent, um, and Wikipedia will not tell you that. Um, the internet has misinformation on it. It makes and leads people to become misinformed, which makes them uninformed about the actual information in which they need. Um, uh, unless you're somebody who knows that you have to cross-reference everything at some point or another, then you're going to be lost. You're going to have misinformation about traditions. You can't read a book that was written by somebody who was never in a tradition about a tradition that they were never in. Because you're not going to get all the information. And you'll probably get a bunch of lies along with it. Um, which is what I think one Wiccan high priest was trying to get at. Now, I've actually taught and mentored quite a few teens um, in my time here. We've had teens that come into the path that use it as a title to scare their friends. We have teens that use the religion to rebel against their parents. Uh, and we Then we also have some who take it very seriously. I, I know because I have, like I said, mentored a lot of these kinds of people. Um, some will choose to learn the basics and not go any further, but think that they know everything. Others will read two, one or two books uh, by one specific author and swear up and down that they're the ones that, that are right and there's no other way to do it. And then you have those who will question everything, just like you do, Pagan Vlogs. Just exactly like you do, question everything. Um, it's needed. If you don't question everything, you're not going to learn. Um, just because this is not right for you doesn't mean that it's not right for anyone else. And I think that was what your point was. Um... And then you got those who are extremely devoted and the ones who find joy in their dedication to the path. The ones with a deep innate calling um, to it that will actually excel to the priesthood and become the priestesses and priests that will actually end up teaching the next generation. Like one Wiccan high priest said, um, I, 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 I use my channel the same way that both of you do actually. Um, I, I use my channel to teach and educate. Uh, I also do video responses on really good topics like this um, with with all the wonderful information out there on the craft comes with it all the misinformation and we have to bear this in mind because I am constantly correcting people um, all of us pagans on YouTube whether young or old who are serious try to dispel the negativity and misinformation with truth facts and personal experiences um, so that way there's not a whole lot that can be misinterpreted um, the part two video of one Wiccan high priests, um, VR, R E V R. Um, I don't disagree with hardly anything that was on there, so I'm not going to really push that one too much. Um, but pagan vlogs, your VR to the VR, uh, you covered the etymology of which, but in your first video response, we discussed Wicca. You, you kind of flip flop there a little bit. Like I've been saying off and on throughout the video, I'm guilty of this, okay? I cannot stay on track. That's why I have notes. <laughs> it's actually, what I liked about both of the videos is that you both were talking from the heart. You're, I have exactly, pretty much word for word, what I wanted to say written down in here, and I keep getting sidetracked. Um, and I'm talking from the heart when I do. And that's what makes these videos so awesome to sit down and listen to, no matter how long they are. And I'm sorry, but I'm pushing 20 minutes now. Um, you also said that you're um, ec you're an eclectic pagan witch, which we discussed earlier, so not going to push. Um, you said eclectic Wicca, though, is taking whatever feels right for you and what feels right to your spirit, and you apply it. Although this is partially true of Eclectic Wicca, um, and even of some traditions who seek new ways of furthering their spiritual knowledge, it's not entirely true. That's not entirely what Eclectic Wicca is. Um, with Eclectic Wicca, the way that I was taught, um, and, and what I was taught about it, 
is that yes you do take what feels right and apply it but you also use the same format of ritual and ceremony that traditional Wiccans use the whole basis or basics of what Wicca is so to speak um, like we talked like we discussed earlier in this video response that's what makes eclectic Wicca a form of Wicca if you are not worshiping and, and respecting the nature and the Lord and the lady you're and doing this through a specific kind of ceremony you're not practicing Wicca because that's what kind of makes Wicca what it is it's the basic foundation of it um, otherwise you're just taking a bunch of different practices throwing them together and that doesn't make you Wiccan it makes you pagan um, you're practicing eclectic pagan with no specific basics or structure to your rites. And that's actually where that whole eclectic Wicca versus, you know, is watered down versus traditional Wicca comes into play. Um, you know, I know a lot of traditionalists see me as kind of watered down. But the thing is, is that I actually do practice a very structured form of the basic ceremonial rites to honor deity, to honor nature um and incorporate nature into my worship of deity you know and that's the foundation um you don't build your house on the sand you build it on a sturdy foundation that's what wicca is you can't be wiccan and not worship deity it doesn't work <laughs> um one thing you have to remember about traditional Wicca pagan vlogs is that no matter which one you look at, there are teachings that are, um, as one Wiccan high priest said, uh, passed on via word of mouth. No matter how interconnected we are all across the internet, there's a lot of practices that are passed on orally or through private books of shadows that will never make it into the public they stay within a specific family um and that's actually what's a lot what has allowed traditions um such as the gardenarian and alexandrian traditions to have survived as long as they have as well as before we went into um this concept of what wicca is um or in modern terms of modern Wicca, which some people call New Age. Um, before that, th there were these groups of people. I mean, look at the Druids. There are still actually teachings from the Druids that got passed down through the different families. Um, and some of those traditions still survive today. And it's because that they remained in those families that they are still surviving. Um, so no matter what you may read about a specific tradition, if it's not coming from somebody directly who is currently practicing within the tradition or somebody who has practiced in the tradition at some point in their lives, you can't take it for more than just face value. Um, also, again, this goes back to the whole concept of having patience here. When you're learning about them, you have to keep an open mind and not jump to conclusions. Um, this is definitely critical to your own learning at this junction because you started talking about this in the, in one of the videos um, that you had read about the Alexandrian tradition. Well, you can read about the Alexandrian tradition, you can read about the Gardnerian tradition, but until you're part of that tradition or until you start learning about um, the tradition through somebody who's actually within the tradition, you're not going to learn anything other than what's there at face value. Um, my personal view on this subject of who is and who isn't um, or who can't or can call themselves Wiccan is ultimately up to the Lord and Lady. Uh, by general standards, though, to call oneself Wiccan is to actually state that you practice a minimum of the basics of Wicca, honoring deity, circle casting, helping uh, the planet, respecting everything that deity has given us. I've had this debate quite a few times on the whole concept of the term witch, whether or not you can be a witch or not when you can call yourself a witch or not. To be a witch, you have to practice witchcraft, which is a practice of and in itself, um, whereas some people will actually call it a religion all its own. Um,
So Pagan Vlogs, it's great that you uh, question everything. Like I said earlier, it's how we learn. Um, your view on the legitimacy, um, though, sounds more closest to Lori Cabot, like I said earlier, uh, also known as the First Witch of Salem. Uh, she states Wicca is not a religion, that witchcraft is the religion, uh, which is okay. But for some people, this doesn't ring true because a craft, or in this case, the craft, is not only an art, but it's also a, uh, a skill or a practice um, where a religion is not. A religion is not a skill. Um, at nine minutes into um, this VR, VR video, I definitely agree with you up to the point where you say um, they're eclectic. I have my own personal reasons for this, but this video is already obnoxiously obnoxiously long as it is and there's only a couple more things that I wanted to point out um, although in the religion of Wicca we do practice witchcraft it is not a necessity to practice um, in order to follow the religion I've actually known many who have actually practiced witchcraft who who are or were Wiccan, but only worship deity and practice herbalism. If you're wondering what the mini earthquake was, that was the um, our dog Diesel, and I'll show him. Say hi, DD. Say hi, DD. Yeah, Diesel. Um, <laughs> he likes to bump everything. Um, defining Wicca, though, you started getting into that whole concept. Um. And you said that it was a silly argument. Uh, my question to you, though, is why? Why is defining Wicca uh, a silly argument to you? Um, there really is no one clear definition of what Wicca is, what it encompasses, or who can call themselves Wiccan, unless you actually look at like the Wikipedia definition. Um, because there's no one specific definition. Uh, everybody kind of gives it their own definition, so to speak. They kind of personalize the definition. Um, you can actually ask, what is Wicca to 20 different Wiccans, and you'll get 25 different answers. Uh, and that that's because it all depends on their own personal interpretation and their own personalization of the definition and what it means to them. Uh, granted, there will be similarities because we all actually do essentially practice the same thing to a certain degree. But um, the best analogy that I can actually think of is, is the Occupy movement that's going on currently. Um, there's a unified message in Occupy. Everybody who's an occupier is saying the same thing. Um, but they also all have their own personal motives for being part of Occupy and things that they personally would like to see changed. Um, and in Wicca, it's the exact same way. I mean, we all practice the same thing, essentially. We all have the same message, but we also all have our own personal way of doing things. We all have our own personal teachings that we take to heart and um, some things that we don't really so much take to heart, but we have to practice because it's part of the tradition. Um, or the lack thereof of a tradition, if you look at it from the eclectic standpoint. Um, but just because there are all these rules and regulations uh, in, in the traditional standpoint, it, it's not that you can't be free uh, to worship the divine in your own way. Because there are people uh, that are in specific traditions that when they're at home, they don't practice the way that their tradition taught them in its entirety. They, they worship the way that they feel that needs to be represented at the time. Um, and that's because we all interpret deity differently. We all interpret the divine differently, differently, or as you said, the all. Um, and in that respect, I can actually agree with you on that. Um, and I'm sorry this video is obnoxiously bright in the background and kind of dark in the foreground, but um, this was the only place where I could make this video undisturbed and still got disturbed. So, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Um, this was just kind of my little thing, uh, some of the observations that I made, some of my own personal attempts at trying to understand, um, as well as try and kind of build a bridge between the two of you guys because it, you both have a lot to learn from each other. Um, and I would really like to see more of the pagan community actually sit down and try to do this, to try and communicate with one another and, and, and actually have a civilized conversation rather than, you know, 
some of these kids on YouTube who like to try and post vampire spells turn themselves into vampires and try to attack the other person. Um, yeah, that's not that's not paganism. That's not Wicca. That's somebody who needs to understand the concept between fiction and, and reality. Um, anyway, I hope you guys kind of got at least a little feeling of what I was trying to see, um, what I was trying to say. And um, I, I tried to give you both the best advice that I possibly could uh, concerning each of your different views on the same subjects. Um, pagan vlogs, try not to jump to conclusions as quickly as you were. Uh, one Wiccan high priest, don't, don't really try to come across arrogant, I guess. Um, but both of you are going to do what you want to do. I mean, I'm I'm just giving you my kind of perspective on the whole thing. Um, I can agree with both of you on certain topics and on other things. I don't agree with either one of you. But um, I'm not taking sides. And I think both of you gentlemen actually make great videos. And I hope you both continue to make great videos. Uh, I know I will one way or the other. So <laughs> you guys, please stay safe in your paths. Um, whether it be Wiccan or not, um, and be yourselves. Be who the goddess and the god created. All right? That's all I've got to say on, uh, concerning this whole crazy rant that I've gone on here. Blessed be y'all.